On the left hand side is a scale model of the Yamato 1 magneto hydrodynamic ship. It's 15 centimeters long. The original hull had a length of 30 meters, giving this a scale of 1 in 200. The original displacement was 185 tons, and since displacement scales with length cubed, this model will have an equivalent displacement of 23.1 grams. On the right hand side is a 1 in 3.5 scale of my MHD remote control hull. And just to keep things interesting, I'm adding a stretched version of my hull geometry and it is stretched to the same waterline length of the Yamato hull. What is not as apparent from this is the fact that all these hulls are scaled to the same displacement of 23.1 grams. And if you want the same displacement from a high performance catamaran hull like the Tornado, you are going to need a hull 26 centimeters long and you're going to need two of them. In this video I'm going to compare the drag of all these different hulls and see which one will give the best speed with a magneto hydrodynamic drive. Hopefully in the process it will also become clear which hull design parameters are the most important when selecting a hull for MHD drive. To appreciate why hull selection is so important it helps to understand how an MHD drive behaves differently from something like a propeller. So to illustrate this I'm going to show a graph of force versus velocity. The drag on a hull increases with velocity and if you put a constant power on the propeller shaft the thrust on the propeller will decrease with increasing velocity. At any speed where the thrust is higher than the drag the hull will accelerate according to Newton's second law force equals mass times acceleration where force is the thrust minus the drag this distance over here. As the boat accelerates the thrust decreases, drag increases until these two lines intersect there the forces are in equilibrium and the velocity of the boat stabilizes that velocity over there is the maximum velocity that the boat can attain under that shaft power. Now by comparison Let's assume we have an MHD drive that can produce the same thrust at that velocity. The thrust curve will be practically horizontal. The thrust on a jet drive such as an MHD varies very little with velocity. Now I'm going to zoom in on this area of intersection to explain the differences. Right, zooming into that point of intersection and just for the purpose of this illustration I'm going to exaggerate the slope of these curves. That would be the drag curve of the hull and that would be the thrust curve from the propeller. And like I said before the thrust from an MHD drive is fairly constant. Now let's investigate what happens if the hull has a higher drag. The drag curve on the hull would move up and to the left the new maximum velocity attainable with the propeller is that point of intersection over there. So let's just plot that down to the graph. That velocity there is what we can now achieve with the propeller. Meanwhile, the intersection with the MHD drive has moved further to the left. So what you can take away from this is the fact that for a change in drag in the hull, the impact on velocity is much more severe if you have an MHD drive with a flat thrust curve versus a propeller with a sloping thrust curve. I'm just going to interrupt myself here for a second to explain why I say the thrust is constant. The thrust in an MHD is equal to the magnetic field strength, the distance between the electrodes and the current. And since all these remain constant throughout operation, the thrust should remain the same. However, as you will see later from the Yamato test results, there is still quite a significant downward slope in the thrust on their MHD. I still need to try and figure out exactly why that is. Now let's take a closer look at the drag on a hull. It is composed of multiple components. One particularly important component is wave drag and it is generally very low at low speed. Also important is friction drag which tends to increase very slowly And together, 
they form the total drag on the hull. There is generally some velocity below which the friction drag is the more prominent of the two components and above that velocity wave drag is the more important one to look at. So depending on what velocity you expect from your hull you might want to pay more attention to one or the other of these two drag components. As it turns out the Yamato 1 ship operated in a region that suggests that friction drag is the more prominent of these two drag components and since friction drag is proportional to wetted surface area I have also printed a template to plot the water plane area and determine the wetted surface area on these models. So that there is the wetted surface area, the submerged area on the Yamato ship. Five dodgy paint jobs later and you can see the difference between the relative wetted surface areas. For a head-to-head -head performance and drag comparison, I'm going to assume that each ship will be outfitted with the same magnetohydrodynamic drive as found on the Yamato 1 ship. And just to keep things simple, I'm also then going to assume that each ship needs to have the same displacement of 185 tons. At full scale, the Yamato 1 ship has a wetted surface area of 270 square meters. The short motor hull will be 19 meters long, with a wetted surface area of 143 square meters. The stretched motor hull will be 25.8 meters long, wetted surface area of 170 square meters. And the catamaran will top out at 51 meters and a wetted surface area of 344 square meters. I used a program called Michelet to model the geometries and plot the drag curves. The yellow line is the total drag for the Yamato 1 ship and these red dots are the actual measured values during tow tests. If I plot the trend line through these points and the origin it gives me a very nice smooth drag curve. The Michelet curve is not a perfect fit but it's good enough for the purpose of this video. These two lines show the drag components that make up the total drag. The lower purple line is the wave drag and the orange line represents the viscous drag which includes both skin friction as well as form drag. To minimize the overall drag you are often faced with a compromise because the requirements to reduce one of these components often lead to an increase in the other component. For a given displacement the geometry with the lowest wetted surface area is half a sphere but its blunt form means that it still has a very high form drag. So to obtain a hull with low viscous drag, I started with half a sphere, then I stretched it out a little bit and I gave it pointy ends to give it a streamlined shape and reduce the form drag. The drag results from Michelet shows that this hull is capable of at least a not extra speed compared to the Yamato over most of the speed range. The longer version of this hull has very similar performance. Its extra weighted surface area is a small penalty below 4 knots, but above that the extra length starts making up for the additional wave drag. At the other end of the extreme you get your long slender multi holes. Now even if you had a perfect half round cross sectional area, the high length to beam ratio means you get a high wetted surface area. And if you still go and split that volume into two separate holes, you add even more surface area. Despite the catamaran having almost 30% more wetted surface area than the Yamato, it still outperformed it even at low speed. The reason for that is probably because of its extremely streamlined shape which gives it a very low form drag. In my earlier videos I compared the performance of my remote control model with that of a 50 cm research catamaran with similar displacements and magnetic field strength. This is the drag curve for that catamaran as predicted by Michelet. It's the worst performing geometry and there's two good reasons for that. Just like the tornado catamaran, these hulls have a high wetted surface area which increases friction drag. But unlike the tornado, their hulls are not very streamlined and the ends are relatively blunt. This gave them very high form drag. Just to get back to the thrust curve of the Yamato, I compared the static thrusts obtained during bollard pool test with the thrust requirements and the actual speeds obtained during testing. As an example, a magnetic field strength of 2 Tesla and 2000 amps of current gave a static thrust of 6600 newtons. That should have been enough to give a top speed of almost 7 knots, but they only achieved 5.3 knots. 
That equates to roughly 50% loss in thrust compared to static thrust. Similar reductions in thrust can be seen across the entire test range from 1 Tesla and 500 amps all the way up to 2000 amps and 3 Tesla. Although these thrust curves appear linear, that is only because I've got only two data points for each curve. The reason for the reduction in thrust isn't obvious, so until I can figure out why that happens, it's difficult to say whether these curves are supposed to be linear or whether they should be curving like normal propeller thrust curves. If I extrapolate these thrust curves and look at where they intersect the drag curves of the other hulls, I can do a proper side-by-side -side speed comparison and see which hull performs the best at each power setting. The results are presented as a percentage of the speed obtained by the Yamato at specific power settings. At low speed the mono hulls clearly reign supreme with very little to choose between the short and the longer version. The longer mono hull obviously has a wider usable speed range and it is only at very high speed where the catamaran becomes the preferred choice. For overall MHD ship performance, I've already discussed momentum transfer efficiency in an earlier video. After today's video, it should also be very obvious how important it is to select the correct hull. These were the main design considerations when I designed my remote control MHD model. But there is a third and extremely important design consideration that affects performance, and that is electrical efficiency. While momentum transfer efficiency tells you how much energy is used to propel the boat forward versus how much energy is lost in the slipstream, electrical efficiency tells you how efficiently your battery power is used to generate that thrust in the first place. MHD drive requirements for momentum transfer efficiency is different from that for electrical efficiency and unfortunately these two are often in competition with each other, which leads to another compromise, but that is another topic for another video.